Hello, my name is Sasha and I'm an intern with the Office of Sustainability at CSU Dominguez Hills and welcome to this presentation on native plants. We will cover general terminology, but our focus will be on plants native to California. By the end of this presentation, you should have a solid understanding on the importance of native plant species, be able to differentiate between native and invasive plant species, as well as know the proper steps for planting a plant from a pot. So to start things off, what is a California native plant? According to Prairie Nursery, a native plant is a plant that is indigenous to a given geographic area in geologic time. So for the most part, California natives are the plants that were here before European settlement. There are many cool things about California natives, but here are a few fun facts from the California Native Plant Society. California is a biodiversity hotspot, and we have more plant species here than any other state in the country. And at least one third of California natives are found nowhere else in the world. If you are interested in learning more fun facts about California natives, check out their website at cnps.org. Now that we've gone over what native plants are, we'll briefly discuss their importance. Native plants in their native habitats support life and biodiversity by attracting local and migrating birds and all kinds of pollinators. They are also adapted to their regions and do not require much maintenance. Therefore, they are a much more sustainable option for our gardens and local landscapes. If you want to find out more about the plants that you should be planting in your yard or about what plants attract what pollinators or just about anything related to California natives, visit calscape.org. There is a lot of different terminology used to describe various plant species, but we will just cover a few more definitions. Invasive plants are not native to environment, and once introduced, they establish, quickly reproduce, and spread rapidly. Invasive plants cause harm to the environment, economy, and or human health. By outcompeting native plants, which then affects the other native species that rely on those native plants. Introduced plants are those living outside their native range, but have arrived there by human activity. It's usually unlikely for an introduced species to survive in a new area, so most do not become invasive. So not all introduced plants are invasive, but all invasive plants were introduced. Finally, there are naturalized plants. These are plants that have become established as part of the plant life of a region other than their place of origin. Now this may seem like pretty clear definitions. However, there is debate on which term to use for certain plants. One person may call one plant species invasive, while another may argue the plant species is naturalized. It just depends on who you're talking to. If this isn't super clear, don't worry. We'll go over some examples that will hopefully help this make more sense. Here's a classic example of an invasive species in California. Have you ever been driving along and look out your window and see a magnificent amount of yellow outside? Or maybe you've seen these tall yellow flowers pop up in your backyard. You are most likely seeing black mustard, which is a super invasive plant in California. It is part of the grass family, is wind dispersed, and an annual plant. That means it is quick growing and in one year produces thousands of seeds on a single plant that are then carried around all over the place. If it wasn't clear already, this plant is a big problem. If you do see it in your yard, pull it out immediately. Otherwise, it will take over and be near impossible to eradicate. Here's an example that is brought up a lot in the invasive versus naturalized debate in Southern California, eucalyptus. If you've been to Southern California, you've seen this tree and probably numerous of them. But these are native to Southeastern Australia and we don't have koalas here eating them, so they should be considered invasive, right? Well, some people argue that because it's been in the state for so long, it should be considered naturalized. Personally, I still consider them to be invasive, but what do you think? Have you ever planted a plant from a pot before? Typically seeds are germinated in specialized pots and then moved to other pots prior to being sold. So chances are high that whatever you are planting, whether it's native or not, will be coming from a pot. So here is a quick review of how to plant a potted plant into the ground. The first step is to know your plant. What kind of soil does it prefer? What are the sun and watering requirements? 
How large will it get and will it have enough space in the area you are thinking about planting it? There are many more factors that need to be considered when planting a new plant, and these are not the only ones. Again, a good guide to use is calscape.org. It is full of information on just about every California native. The second step is to dig and prep the soil. The hole should be about as deep as the level of the soil inside the pot. Basically, you don't want the root sticking out, nor do you want to bury the stem and leaves. If your soil is super dry, or if you will not be able to water it for the first few weeks, it can be a good idea to fill the hole with water prior to planting to increase the moisture in the soil. If you're going to do this step, add water until it almost reaches the top of the hole, then let it drain. Do not place your plant inside the hole if there is still water inside. The roots will rot. Also, if the dirt in the ground isn't great, you can dig a slightly bigger hole and fill it with a little higher quality soil before planting. After digging, it is time to free your plant and the roots. Be nice to your plant and don't try to pull it right out of the pot before loosening it up a little first. Simply push in the sides of the pot and loosen up the soil. After the soil is loose, you can grasp the stem with two fingers on either side and flip the plant over. Gently put the plant right side up and place it in the hole. Often if a plant has been in a pot for a while, the roots become incredibly tangled together. In order to help the plant grow well in the ground, you can tickle the roots to loosen them up. This is a very important step that is often overlooked. Now it's time to fill in the hole. You can use the dirt that you dug up from the ground or some better quality soil as previously mentioned. Then pat down the soil. You do not need to jump on the soil and make it super packed down, but it also shouldn't be too loose, so you need to find that happy medium. The stem should not be level or below the surrounding ground, or it can rot when watered. To prevent this, make a little mound as seen as the, in the picture on the right. Hooray, you've planted your plant. Now you just need to care for it as instructed. Not all plants are the same, so you will need to give some more attention than others, especially in the first couple weeks. Generally, California natives are drought tolerant and have minimal water requirements, especially once they are established. Also remember that not all plants are evergreen and have leaves year round. Sometimes your plant will look dry, brown, and maybe even dead, but don't pull it out. And it's probably still alive, so just leave it be and chances are it will look lovely again after some rain. Now here's a short video to help you visualize the steps we just went through if you weren't sure about some things. She mentions the addition of fertilizer, but you can disregard that. Also, you may need to adjust the volume, so just get ready. Hi, I'm Angela Price from Eden Condensed Small Space Garden Design, and this is Garden Space. So let's say you get this lovely potted plant of flowers. These are impatiens here. Um, I want to give you some tips on how to ensure that they get planted in the ground uh, from the pot so that they'll succeed the best. Uh, when they're grown in the nursery centers, they're grown in specialized potting soil and putting them directly into an in-ground garden bed, you're not always sure what's, what your dirt's made out of. So you want to give it enough nutrition and enough water so that the plant doesn't go into shock and that it has the best start in life. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you dig a hole that's uh, twice as wide and as deep and then as deep as the pot that it's coming from and make sure that it's nice and deep. I always like to add a little bit of organic potting soil to my potting hoil and as well as some time to release fertilizer. Um, this is Osmocote for outdoor uh, plants and I'm going to put about a tablespoon in the potting hole as well just to give it um, a good start and make sure that it's got ample nutrition. Then you'll want to gently release the pot the the pot away from the plant, remove any plastic tags or anything, and then take a look at the root system. If the roots are pretty tightly bound up, you'll want to take the time to loosen them. You can even remove some of the dirt from the bottom and loosen them. But try to keep as much of the soil, not like that one, uh, try to keep as much of the soil intact because this is what this plant is used to and you don't want to have it all bare rooted before you stick it in. 
Then you're gonna go ahead and put it in your planting hole and smooth the dirt over it that you dug out. And make sure it's covered on all sides. Pat it down gently, but not too firmly because you do want to make sure that it uh, will absorb water. And then give it a really good watering. So give it a nice good watering and let the water soak in. If it continues to soak in, you can give it a little bit more. And then make sure that you do check on the plant over the next couple of days next week, just to make sure that it's got a good start and that you have your watering schedule down correctly for the particular uh, potted plant that you've put in. If you have any other questions about how to transplant a- Hopefully seeing someone going through the steps of planting helped clear up any confusion. Cal State Dominguez Hills is home to many native gardens. The purpose of the gardens are to provide a living laboratory for classrooms and student research, as well as showcase a sustainable native landscape that hopefully inspires visitors to incorporate more native plants in their yards and gardens. If you are interested in learning more about the gardens around campus, you can find more information on the CSUTH sustainability website. And that is the end of our presentation on native plants. I hope you learned something new and are inspired to go out and plant some native plants wherever you can. Also, if you want to test your comprehension, you can take a quick five question quiz. The link to the quiz is located below in the description section of this video. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me talk about plants. If you have any further questions, feel free to get in touch with the CSUDH Office of Sustainability through email or phone. Thanks again and hope you enjoyed this presentation.